everybody. My name is Kim Hargrave and I'm the Education Director here at the Denison Pequot Seacoast Nature Center. And I'm really happy today to talk about one of my favorite mammals, which is the American beaver right here. And American beavers are actually the largest rodents that we have here in North America. And I have to say there's a little distraction in the room again today. We have Miss Rosie the pigeon out flying around. She is now a confirmed female. She laid some eggs the other day. And so we know that Rosie's a girl. And you might see her and hear her flying back and forth across the classroom as we talk today. Right, because she's dogs. one of our um, few fully flighted birds here at the Nature Center. So while we are closed to the public, we allow her to stretch her wings. And so she might make an appearance in front of the camera or certainly that noise behind. Absolutely. So anyway, let's talk about beavers, though. And beavers are amazing because they're the only animals besides people who can actually engineer the landscape. Okay, elephants can a little bit, but here in North America, they're really the other engineering animal. And they can completely change the landscape by building ponds. And so what I want you to imagine for a minute is a stream, you know, a nice stream going through the woods, and a beaver who has turned two years old has been kicked out of its home. Once beavers are two, they get kicked out. They've got to go find and set up their own territory. And so this beaver is coming by and it sees this beautiful streamed area with lots of trees, especially birch trees they like, aspen trees they love, but they'll take advantage of any trees that are in the area. And what they're going to start to do is they want to build a home there. Well, in order to do that, they have to have a pond. So they will start creating a dam. They will use trees and mud to Cut, they cut down the trees, they bring them into the water, they use the mud and they actually build that dam. And so that means all the water that's coming down the stream starts to get blocked up. And as it does, it floods. You can imagine when you put the drain, the plug in your bathtub, the water starts to fill up. Well, the same thing happens here at the stream. And as the water spreads out, it creates a pond. Trees that they haven't cut down will eventually die because they're flooded in that area. And you actually get a new pond in the woods. A totally different environment than the fast moving stream that used to be there. And that pond will actually invite other animals to live there. So the pond that the beavers build, bullfrogs will move into, um, fish might eventually end up in there that used to be in the stream, um, newts, type of salamanders, different birds, ducks, all those things, all those animals move in to this new environment. So they create a home not just for themselves, but for lots of other animals. Now, once they have that pond, they need to build the home that they live in, which is called a lodge. So beavers do not live in dams. They actually live in lodges. And the lodge is a big pile of sticks that has its entrance underneath the water. So when you look at that big pile of sticks in the middle of a pond, you know, you're like, I don't see any doors, but the doors are underneath. And the reason why they want to have their lodges in the middle of that pond is they want the pond to be deep enough so when it freezes in the winter, they can still get in and out underneath the ice. The other reason why to have your door under the water is it cuts down on the number of predators that might come and try to find you. So the only predator that might really get into a beaver lodge directly is this guy right over here, which is the river otter. So river otters will sometimes sneak in to beaver lodges, but they're pretty much the only animal can, that can do that. All right, so if you take a look at this beaver here, he's got a lot of great adaptations for living in a pond. And one of the first adaptations you're gonna notice on this guy is his fur. He's got this beautiful, thick, dark fur right here. This fur is waterproof and it keeps them warm. Remember what I said, I said that they're gonna go out underneath the ice and swim around. I want you to think about that, swimming in a frozen pond underneath the ice, it's gonna be really, really cold. And this fur will actually keep them warm. It's one of the densest furs that we have here in North America. And if you look carefully at it, you're gonna see that the fur has two layers. It's got these long pieces of hair right here on the top, and then underneath when I go like this, you're going to see this fuzzy fur right here. This fuzzy fur keeps the beaver warm. And then the oils that they put in these long hairs 
actually makes it waterproof. So I want you to imagine you throw your nice warm sweatshirt on and you put your raincoat on top so that you're warm and dry in a rainstorm. Well, that's what a beaver fur acts like. So their skin actually doesn't get wet when they're swimming around underneath the water. Now, if you're a study, you like to study American history, study beavers. Because of these thick pelts is what led to westward expansion here in the United States in the early um, 1700s. Um, and 1800s is why people were looking for these pelts. Unfortunately, they had trapped all the beavers along the East Coast, so they kept on moving west to look for more beavers, to trap more pelts, to send them to Europe where they'd get a lot of money for them. And it's a pretty amazing story of beavers and um, the colonization of the entire United States. So take a look at that, and it's all because of this beaver fur here. Now, other really cool adaptations you might notice about the beaver is this flat tail right here. The tail doesn't have any fur on it, and despite all of the um, cartoons and things like that that you see of a beaver slapping their tail down with, to put the mud on their dam, that doesn't happen in real life. What the beaver uses its tail for is two things. One, it helps them steer when they're swimming, and the other thing is if there's danger around, they actually will take their tail and they slap it on the water and that sla splashing sound warns the other beavers that live in that group that there's danger around. Now the other beavers that are living with them, it's mom and dad beaver, and they usually will mate for life, and then it is their kids. They tend to have two to four babies a year, and then the previous year's kids, who are about 18 months old. Um, and again, it could be up to four of them as well. But in general, it's usually, you know, two, babies, two yearlings, and then mom and dad beaver in one particular lodge. They are very territorial beavers, and that's because there is a finite resource of trees in that area. Beavers, despite these crazy sharp teeth, are complete herbivores, all right? So beavers do not eat any kind of meat. They only eat plants. They're going to eat parts of the tree. They're going to eat leaves, and they also eat aquatic plants. Now, this taxidermy beaver here, there's something wrong with it, and it's actually the color of its teeth. Beavers do not have white teeth. They actually have orange teeth. And so I'm gonna show you a little bit on both of these right here, these two skulls. Unfortunately, these are real skulls, and sometimes they get a little bit broken, but you can see the color of these teeth. That orange enamel actually has iron in it, and that means that those teeth are extra strong. I'm gonna kind of move it to the side a little bit so we can see these bottom incisors right here. So what happens is the iron part wears down slower than the regular tooth part. So you actually get this chisel shape, <laughs> can't even say it, the chisel shape, and that actually helps the beavers to be able to cut down the trees. All right, so Ooh, remember- Can we jump in with a question? So we had a great question from, um, from Let's see. From Emma, who's age 10, who wants to know what size log they can carry, uh, cut down and carry. All right. So these little teeth, I have seen, I was actually out yesterday and discovered some, a new area with beavers near my house. And one of the trees that they were trying to cut down, I would say, you know, the diameter was probably 20 inches. Now, the big, I've seen them cut down trees that big. They can't cut that whole tree down and then carry that whole tree off. They're actually then gonna take the smaller branches and move that into the lodge. So some of the big ones that I've seen though, you can take a look at this one that I got out for us today. <laughs> um, you can see it's as big as me and a beaver could definitely move this. If you're ever near a beaver lodge, look for what we call slides or areas where beavers are actually bringing the log down into the pond. You'll see it looks like a little trail right down to the edge of the water. And the beavers are using that to actually push and pull all of these branches to their dams and to their lodges. Oh, we have a great question that's also from Emma and her mom, Cheryl. If they have iron in their teeth but do not eat meat, how do they get the iron? So, just like we can get iron from plant sources, so can beavers. So certain plants will have iron in them. That's how they can get that. Now remember that beavers are rodents and their teeth are always growing. 
So their teeth actually go all, extend all the way back into the top of their skull and way back here into their lower jawbone to about right here. And as they get, as their teeth wear down, more of their teeth come up. If for any reason a beaver didn't have the ability to chew, it would actually be really bad for the beaver. He could get hurt with his teeth growing. It's just like when you have a rabbit, who are not rodents, but they still have that similar tooth growth. You know, they have to sometimes be filed down when they're in captivity. All right, so absolutely amazing teeth right here. Since we're looking at the skull closely, um, I said that rabbits are herbivores. A way to tell when an animal is a herbivore is they're lacking any carnivore teeth. These teeth right here are not missing, all right? Because they're a rodent, they have these front teeth and then these back teeth, but no canine teeth right now, here. Now, Ari wants to know how sharp their teeth are and what the hardest thing is that they can bite through. So really, they're only designed for biting through trees, so they couldn't ever chew on a rock or anything like that. That would could break their teeth or hurt their teeth. But they can um, cut down harder trees. So... Um, you know, while they prefer some of our softer trees like birch and aspen, they have no problem chopping down an oak tree as well. And that is a definitely a little bit of a harder piece of wood right there. Now, as we go back to the mount over here, we have a question from Amy who would like to know how robust they are. She said they aren't quite as robust as the taxidermy beaver suggests, right? How big are they? So there actually is a really wide um, range in beaver weights. Um, our, our, our beaver here is a little bit on the large side, but a beaver can weigh up to 45 pounds. And they are the largest rodent in North America, correct? Yes, they are the largest rodent in North America. Um, and so they're, they are, they can be a very substantial animal. Um, you know, and it depends on, you know, location, food, things like that. And just like people, we're all different sizes. So can beavers, beavers can be as well. Male and female beavers are about the same size though, so you cannot tell the difference of sex just by um, looking at their size or anything like that. So there's a few more cool adaptations that beavers have for life in the water. One is their eyes, and I know it's a little tricky to see the eyes on this particular mount, and that's because their eyes are small. Beavers do not have great eyesight, but they do have an extra pair of eyelids. They have a clear pair of eyelids that work as goggles for when they're swimming under the water so that they don't accidentally poke themselves with a stick or anything like that. They have small ears and those ears can actually fold over so they don't get water in their ears where they're swimming. I find that really annoying. So that's a great adaptation. They have their ears. own ear plugs. They right? built in and nose plugs as well. Beavers are actually able to hold their nostrils closed while they're swimming around underwater as well. So really great adaptations they have for life in the water. Also, check this out. They've got these big webbed feet right here as well. So all of these really neat adaptations that are going to make it much easier for them to spend a lot of time in the water. So we have a question from Kathleen. What about beaver who don't make dams or lodges, the ones that live along rivers? What do they do with the trees they cut down? So the ones that are there, they often have, um, they sometimes will make a lodge that hits right to the side of their um, river. So they do have to have a lodge that is where they live. Sometimes, um, you know, we have muskrats as well here in Connecticut, and they're the ones who tend to make either smaller lodges or live in tunnels along the edge of a river. But um, if they can't dam their, their river, they will sometimes build a lodge. But in general, they do prefer that, that pond water. They do make that um, slower area. And whenever they hear running water, that is one of the, re the triggers for them to start building their dam. They sense the running water and um, they hear it, and that it definitely seems to be a trigger when they've done some studies on beavers um, to see what they can do to get them to build dams or to, or to try to stop building dams. One thing that's really important to know about beavers is by the middle of the 1800s, there was no beavers left in Connecticut. They, had, they were extirpated from the state, and they were reintroduced um, starting in, I think, believe 1914, 1915, um, the first pair was reintroduced to the state. Rosie, Rosie says hello. <laughs> um, and since then, um, the beaver population has expanded here in Connecticut. So we have a pretty robust beaver population. If you like to see beavers, it's a little tricky because they're actually nocturnal. Um, so beavers are awake during the night. And I have to say, 
as many times as I go out and visit places with beaver dams and beaver lodges, I've only seen a beaver once um, actually swimming around. Um, so it can be a little tricky to see them, but you can see their signs everywhere. So if you live in Groton, Pequot Woods is a great place to visit. If you live out in the Salem Lime area, Walden Preserve, which is the Salem Land Trust, is a great place to visit. Um, if you're out in North Stonington, um, I've seen them along the Blue Trail system out there. And that's actually where I got to see my beaver swimming around. So, um, so lots of great places to go look for beavers in the area. Area. The other fun thing to do is actually to try to build a little beaver dam. And so I grab whatever plastic container that I can find and I either grab some old Play-Doh, this is some lovely multicolored Play-Doh here that I found, and some sticks. And you can try to make a beaver dam. This is a great little experiment to do at home. And so beavers, what they'll do is they'll take sticks and they'll stick them into the soft mud at the bottom of the uh, pond and then they'll stick some sticks in and then what you do is you can definitely build upon this one. This is just a little little start that I have. And you can do some tests and see how long it takes for the water to run through your beaver dam. You can tell I didn't do a great job there, but see how the water is starting water to run through? But you can build a better one and see how long it takes for the water to seep through the dam. Great use for that multicolored clay after being used for several projects. <laughs> yep. um, we do have a couple questions that have come in. So sure. Charlie would like to know if beavers ever moved into an older lodge or always make a new one, which ties into another question from Emma of how many lodges do they make in their lifetime? So it really depends. Um, beavers can move into old lodges if for something happens to the pair that's living there, beavers will, and then they will improve upon it, you know, buy the new house, put a few nice new additions, new roof on it, things like that. Um, you know, it really depends on how many lodges a beaver builds. Some of the ponds that I've been to do have multiple lodges, um, and it depends usually on the, the number of beavers that are living in that particular area, and if something happened to one of the lodges. Um, they might build another one. So one place that I go visit, I can see three lodges there, um, but that doesn't mean there's three different groups of beavers living in that one pond. Okay, and Becca would like to know how old be uh, beavers can live for. You know, that is an excellent question, and I am not 100% sure. My guess would be probably about 10 years, but we would need to double check and we'll get back to you on that. Yeah, we'll respond to you later today. Christiana would like to know how big the beaver can grow to be. So the, this would be a very large beaver, um, but about max weight is about 45 pounds here for um, beavers. Okay, and Emma would like to know why they have webbed feet. Is that to help them swimming through the water? Yes, that is absolutely to help them swim through the water. And it's a little tricky to see on this particular map, but one of their scale, one of their um, toenails actually has a slit in it, and they're able to take oil. They have a special gland near the base of their tail, and they take oil from it, and they actually comb it into their fur. So that actual uh, toenail works as a comb for their fur, and that's how they get the oil you know, all the way up into all the different pieces of their fur, which is, which is pretty neat. Um, the other thing that beavers have that's a great adaptation is their sense of smell. And that's how they mark their territory so that they know when a, a new beaver is coming in the area, that beaver knows, oh, that lodge is all set, uh, doesn't need another beaver at it, is by those scent mounds. And so you see these little mounds and they actually put scent on them and that's how the beavers communicate with each other. Which ties into what I think is a fun fact and Kim thinks is a slightly creepy fact. Kim, would you like to share? <laughs> well, some types of artificial vanilla actually have um, some of the stuff from the, for the beaver in it um, to make that flavor. Because one of the things about beavers is that their scents don't necessarily stink and smell the way that, you know, when a cat sprays or something like that. And so for some time, people have used that for an artificial flavoring. So you may be more inclined to go for that um, pure vanilla yeah, yes. moving forward and look at your ice cream a little differently. Um, we do have a question from Amy who would like to know, why do beavers leave their lodges? So they often will leave their lodges if there's not enough trees in the area anymore. So what happens is beavers, they're kind of rotund, they don't move well on land. And so if they have really taken down all the easy accessible trees in an area, they might be forced then to move to a new territory. And what'll happen then 
is the beaver dam without constant maintenance will eventually break. You know, there's always a bit of water trickling through beaver dams, which is why, you know, the streams keep on flowing and things like that. Most fish that are uh, migratory are able to get over those small dams. And um, what happens is though that dam will break and the pond will slowly drain. And as it drains, it goes back to the stream course. But remember what I said, all the trees that have been flooded out in that area have now died and um, they've cut down a lot of trees in the area. And that's why you get this wet meadow, we call it a beaver meadow. And over time, you know, the water continues to drain back into the stream and eventually the trees will return. And it's a huge natural cycle in nature um, of how beavers actually create ponds, they create meadows, and then the forest return and a new family of beavers begin the whole process again. So it's absolutely incredible what these animals can do. Uh, we have a question from Vera who would like to know, is there now a healthy beaver population in Connecticut? Yes, beavers have a very strong population here in Connecticut. So. And Emma would like to know if they have a favorite plant to eat. So, um, like I said, birches, aspens, um, apple trees also can be some of their favorite types of, um, of wood to chew on. And when you think about that, like, I like black birch a lot too because it smells like wintergreen, has that nice scent. So there's yellow birch, which is a very common wetland tree. Um, and applewood also smells really good too. But again, they will go for oaks, maples, hickory, whatever else is happens to be in the area. All right, great. Is there anything else that's maybe a favorite adaptation that you want to share with the group at large? So we're going to give just another minute or two for people to send in some questions um, by commenting here if you'd like us to answer. We do actually have one that came in from Helen who would like to know if beavers will survive if their dam breaks. So they, the beavers will survive if their water breaks, but they will work really hard to fix it. Beavers will work on their dams pretty much every night for a little bit, um, just to, to, to shore it up. And if a dam is broken, they will just come back and repair it and rebuild it. Sometimes when people are trying to discourage beavers in their territory, they will actually pull, the, um, pull a dam down and beavers come right back and, and rebuild it. One of my favorite things to do when I'm out around beavers, uh, beaver lodges and things like that, is to look at the trees that they've cut and you can tell which ones they're still working on. Because they'll actually sometimes start cutting down a tree and not finish it that night. Or maybe they were scared off, maybe there's a coyote or a bobcat in the area. Those are some of the predators of beavers on land. And um, then they'll have to come back to it. But I like trying to find beaver wood chips around the bottom of these. And so you can see right in here, these are little beaver wood chips that you can often see on a tree that they have been working on. So a we have neat a neat thing to find. Question from Sarah who would like to ask if beavers can see on land. They can see on land. They just don't have great eyesight, so they really depend on their sense of smell and their sense of hearing. And again, they can't move fast on land. So if they are really far away from their pond and a coyote comes by or a bobcat comes by, they're very vulnerable. Um, when they're away from the water. And why do they build dams? They build the dams to um, actually increase the depth of their water and that ensures that um, it won't freeze solid during the winter time. One of the other things that beavers will do to help survive the winter is they'll actually cut down um, trees and take some of the green branches and they store them by the base of their lodge. They put they take these um, branches, they bring them down to the bottom of the pond, they stick rocks on top of them, and then the beavers can come out during, um, during, the, during the night underneath the ice. They grab those branches, bring them back up to their lodge to have a snack. Um, and that's how they eat during the winter if the pond's frozen over. So this winter, we didn't have a lot of ice and things like that on our ponds here in Connecticut, but other winters, sometimes we get, you know, 12 inches of ice here and so the beavers would really depend on that underwater food source that they had stored. Okay so they do not hibernate all winter long? No they do not. They're actually active all winter long. Sometimes we don't see them. A really neat thing to look for is if the ice is um, on the pond, it's a really cold day, you can actually see um, steam sometimes coming out of the top of a beaver lodge and that's the beavers they are all nice and warm and cozy and they're breathing and that steam actually rises out of the top just like smoke out of a chimney and you know that beaver lodge is active so it's a really neat thing to see
All right, great. So for anyone that is hearing, we do have Rosie our pigeon. Um, she's one of our few fully flighted birds here at the Nature Center, so we're allowing her to stretch her wings during the day, um, and she loves the extra attention during our Facebook Live to make an appearance, which Julie is appreciating. Julie, thanks for joining us today. And we have one last question. Can you tell the difference between male and female beavers? Unfortunately, you really cannot. Sometimes if a female beaver is nursing her babies, you can see the swollen mammary glands along her belly, but otherwise you really cannot tell. They are about the same size too. So unlike some types of animals where there's a distinct size difference between male and female, with beavers there's not. All right, great. Well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. We are going to be coming back to you live next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with special programming at 10 a.m. each day because next week is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So we'll have some great programs, so stay tuned on our Facebook page. We'll be listing those events for different ways you can join us. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.